that intertidal zone is a particularly sensitive area to things that happen both in the ocean and also in the uh, terrestrial environment near the ocean. So major things like climate change, uh, these things are going to be seen first, one could argue, in the intertidal zone. And the effects that it's going to have is going to be on the distribution and abundance and diversity of these organisms. My name is Steve Radkin. I'm the coastal ecologist and limnologist for Olympic National Park, which basically means I'm the park's marine biologist and I'm the park's lake biologist. What we're doing right now is we're uh, delineating two worm colonies. Uh, the crew first has to go around and uh, find all the colonies. We come out and sample once a year and we know exactly where each and every one of these colonies is. We use a, uh, an instrument, a laser guided instrument, to basically map out across this entire space where each colony is. Okay, got it, ready for measurement. We're taking laser measurements of all of our colonies. We have a fixed point up there with the GPS laser system so we can track where exactly all these colonies are year after year. So we basically create a giant map of all of our colonies so we can see which ones are living, which ones are dying, which ones are growing. We take a photograph above the colony that we can then, back in the laboratory, determine what the size of this colony is in terms of the area. With these pictures, we're able to compare to what this colony looked like the previous year. Those are the sea star plots. So basically, these plots here are what we call our, our targeted species plots. We uh, work for Olympic National Park doing the sea star monitoring plots. As you see, we have a grid laid out. We come back to year after year, counting and measuring the different sea stars we have. Uh, the main ones we have are the pie zasters, are kind of a keystone predator species in our environment. As you can see, they're kind of moving around, mowing on mussels and barnacles and things, and they really open up a lot of rocky habitat for recruitment of other organisms. Basically take a tape measure and measure from the center ray along their longest arm out. This is a uh, temperature data logger that we have mounted in the, the, the mid intertidal zone. What this instrument does is records the time and the temperature every half hour, year round. We download it once a year. So we get this continuous temperature record of what's going on. Not only what's going on in the water, but also what's going on in the air. Because these organisms are living on a, on a razor thin threshold of physiological extremes, where the upper boundary of organisms is based on, on how they can tolerate heat, on how they can tolerate dryness. These are things that are likely to change with climate change. And played out over time, this, this can ripple through the entire community and food web and cause, cause major changes in, in the environment that we see before us now.